Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode, we created ourselves some environmental effects. We created fire, uh, and it worked out pretty well. You guys hopefully are adding some fire to your scenes now, making yourselves a, an interesting looking level. You guys know how to make yourselves obstacles and fire and a lot of good stuff here. So hopefully you guys are starting to build up a, a good solid level. Uh, in this episode, I'd like to discuss the idea of melee attacks. Uh, we've already looked, we've already created the animation, the melee attack animation. We did that when we were setting up our character. And I'd actually like to put that into, into use now. Uh, and it's going to allow us to discuss uh, some blend layers as well as the concept of a layer mask. Or, or an avatar mask, or, or a rig mask, <laughs> a mask for the animation. Alright guys, let's get started. We've already had some fairly lengthy uh, episodes here, and I really don't like that. I know that the longer the episode gets, the less likely people are to, to watch the entire thing. And it's really important that people are watching this entire thing in order to be able to move along with us. So I'm going to try and keep this one down in length. It's definitely going to require us to break this up into two different parts. Into the creation of the asset to be able to do melee attacks and into the coding. Alright, so this is going to be two different episodes. Uh, and they're both going to be somewhat lengthy. Alright, so let's get started right now. Um, where I'd like to begin is with the actual soldier. If we go back to our model, uh, originally of the soldier itself, if we take a look at the model itself here and expand this, um, when we no, that's a zombie. Don't look at the zombie. <laughs> look at the soldier. Um, and when, if we take a look at the, the soldier itself here, when we originally created the soldier, uh, we created a number of different animations. And we've used most of these animations uh, within, within the system already, within our actual uh, animator already. Uh, and we, we, we do have this one here called the, what did I call it? Player Melee. And I kind of wish uh, I had given it a slightly uh, better name than that because uh, Player Melee is not is not what I actually should have called it. I should have called it, you know, a player gun melee. Uh, particularly what we're doing with this is, is making the character swing his arm. If we take a look at down here, uh, we can see the character is swinging his arm and, and hitting something, whatever is in front of him with his weapon. Uh, so I should have called this gun melee because maybe later on you guys are going to want to add something where the, this soldier has a knife or a sword or anything else you want. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at this for now. Um, we originally added this this player melee right here. Uh, and if I go back to the soldier itself and we take a look at these animations, um, this is where we added it right here. Uh, I'm going to make a, a couple of small changes to this. Uh, if we scroll down so we can see the other options in here, we can see something called mask. And if we open it up, uh, we'll see a definition, where we're getting it from, and something that says transform. Now. The way we want to use uh, this melee attack, what we actually want to do is, is we don't want the entire thing to be used. We don't want this entire um, animation. Can I play it from here? Yeah, we don't want the entire animation to be played. And, and I didn't originally take that into account, to be honest, when I built the animation. So it doesn't look exactly the way I want it to. Um, we only want, we want this character, regardless of what they're doing, if they're, if they're walking or they're standing still or they're jumping or whatever they're doing, we want them to be able to actually use their melee attack. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask uh, that defines um, which portion of the animation is actually being used uh, during the, the attack event. Uh, it's not going to be the entire thing. Um, by having only a portion of it, um, we, can, we can overlay this animation on our animator. We can overlay this animation on top of another event, on top of another animation state. So our character can be running, or sorry, we're not going to have running, actually, we're going to leave running out. Uh, our character can be walking and still swing his weapon. And when I say we're leaving running out, it's not because it can't be done. It's simply because of the way I set up the animation itself. Uh, when, they're, when the character is running, he, he swings the weapon down in front of him, and he's running with his arms going back and forth. And I don't want to also allow the character to be able to do melee in that situation. I want the character to kind of do melee from this standing state. And we maintain this relative stance uh, in our idle state, in our walking state, and in our jumping state. So in all three of those states, I want the character to be able to to uh, swing his weapon in the melee attack. All right, so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to change um, which animation, which which sorry, which parts of the rig are are participating in uh, this actual uh, in this actual event in this actual animation. So I'm going to turn off the master for now, and that's going to turn everything else off, and that's perfectly fine. Um, we we don't want everything. We don't want uh, the root 
So I don't want to use the root at all. I want everything from the lower spine down to be included in the animation. If I include the root itself, the root itself is, is the weight of the character uh, and the entire character will move around. So I'm going to do everything from the lower spine, which is going to be somewhere above here, not including the pelvis, but somewhere above there. Okay, uh, So everything from down there. Uh, so lower spine all the way through the upper body. All right, And if we can see here, it, it cuts off at the pelvis itself. Uh, I don't want the pelvis to be involved in this either. I don't want the pelvis or the crotch or any of these other bones uh, to be included in this as, as well. Uh, just because, like I said previously, um, we're gonna we're gonna add this on top of existing animation. Uh, so only only the bones that I have included here are going to be included in the animation from now on. I don't know what happens if I play it now. Does it look any different? It does. So you can see, oh, interesting. Uh, I'm starting off in that swept state already, and that's perfectly fine. Um, you can see now that we're not getting the entire thing swinging. If I turn this off, let me turn this off again, and add everything back. Bam, I'm going to add the master and everything back in. When I hit play now, we're getting the entire body. You can see right from the very, very base down. But if I scroll backwards, and if I turn off everything from the master down again, and only, oops, and only include the lower spine, when we take a look at this animation playing right now, we're only getting the upper body moving. Okay, that's all we're getting moving is the upper body. So the animation doesn't look exactly like I designed it, uh, and unfortunately as an animator that kind of makes me sad, but it's, it's the restrictions that I'm going to need. Uh, knowing what I know now, if I redid this, I would make the character lean in more from the lower spine and above, you know, uh, knowing what I was going to do in here. I hadn't really considered it when I was making the animation. Anyway. That first part is that. <laughs> I'm really babbling here. That first part is great. So with that mask in place, this is basically a mask that, that, that we've created, and this mask will, will suggest what's going to be included within the animation itself. Great. So far, so good. Uh, let's go over here. Do I have to save this? I don't remember if I have to save it or not. Is there? Yes, there's apply. So I'm going to apply that button, and now only that now everything else is still operating exactly as it was. I can still hit play here, and everything here is still working exactly like it was. I haven't actually changed anything at all. Um, everything is working fine, but the uh, the uh, the the mask is only affecting the particular animation that I set it up on. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to grab the soldier over here. And the soldier itself, if we take a look at the animator, boom. Um, this is our current animation states. Uh, this is our current animation machine, state machine, excuse me. Uh, and what I want to do uh, is I'm going to add an additional layer. If we take a look over here in the corner, we have the options of parameters and we have the options of layers. And currently, we only have a base layer. We only have a base layer. And what I want to do is I want to add an additional layer. I want to add a, an additional additive layer. Okay, I'm going to hit the plus sign right here, and this new layer is going to come up. And I'm going to change the name of this to, um, let's call it uh, Mealy Layer. I've already called it Mealy something before. You might want to give it a better name. You might want to call it, uh, you know, Mealy Gun Layer or something like that if you're only working with the weapon itself. Um, so that said, uh, I'm going to add this new layer. Now I'm going to add something else here. Uh, we have the option if you click on the little the little uh, gear right here. Um, these additional options come, come up. Um, we currently have a, a mask already associated with it, so we don't have to worry about adding an additional mask here. Uh, we do have our, our blending type, and you have the option of either override or additive. And override means takes control, so this is going to override anything else it's doing. And we don't actually want that, we want it to be additive. And that way, and we're going to get a little, little A over here showing up. And the additive layer means whatever it's doing, add this on top, which is pretty cool. Uh, and right here on the top as well, we have the addition of weight. And the weight, you can set it up for any, any value between 0 and 1. 1 being 100% is added, uh, and 0 being none of it's added. Uh, I'm going to pump this up to 100. So um, basically, the parts that I've got uh, the parts that I'm adding are going to override, uh, kind of, and the parts that I, you know, I'm not affecting aren't going to at all. So we're going to see the entire gun sweep in there. It's not going to be a portion of the, you know, shooting kind of thing. It's going to be the entire, the entire hitting. All right, the entire motion of the swinging from the shoulder. All right, so I'm going to leave that at one, uh, and I don't have to change anything else within there. So as long as you see this A in there, you've got yourself an additive layer. Now, 
we have to start adding some animation states to this. Uh, and I'm going to go down here, I'm going to find my player melee, I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it in place. Uh, it's going to be orange, uh, it's the only state that's currently in here. Uh, and some of you are probably thinking, well, how, how do you get here? You know, how, how you actually get into this, this animation layer? Uh, I'm going to come in from anywhere. So from any state, wherever I'm at, I'm going to come in, I'm going to make a transition, and I'm going to go immediately across to my player melee. That transition works exactly the same way as any other transition we've already created. I currently don't have any, let's go back to our parameters. I don't have any parameters. I'm going to add a parameter right now. I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to set up a trigger. And a trigger, uh, we don't have any triggers added yet. Uh, a trigger is like a Boolean, uh, I guess, in that uh, a trigger will activate once, and then it'll go immediately go, it'll go true, and then immediately false again. So it's always ready to be launched again. And that really works out well for a melee attack. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add something here. I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it a uh, gun melee. Gun melee, I think that's probably fine. Uh, I'm going to use gun melee there. And gun melee, like I said, is a trigger. So whenever gun melee kicks off, we're going to kick into this state over here from anywhere we are. So I'm going to come into my transition. Um, no exit time, that's great because it's never going to leave here. And I'm going to add in here plus, and I'm going to find my gun melee. So now, whenever gun melee triggers, we're going to play this animation. Okay, and this animation state, this additional animation layer here, uh, like I said, we're currently in melee, and you can go base or melee. This, this adi these additional layers work exactly the same way as the base layer. Uh, you can do anything that you could do in the other one in this layer as well. So you can add a bunch of different states that you might traverse through uh, that are all additive. Uh, so it's, it's really an, uh, an interesting option. Okay, that's all I really need to do to be able to set up uh, for the code. Uh, at this point forward, it's all code. So uh, I'm going to start writing that in the next episode. Like I said, guys, this is a short one. <laughs> and the last one was like 40 minutes long, and this one's going to be like 10 minutes long. But I'd rather keep them to short intervals uh, rather than long intervals. I know people uh, often get frustrated and tired uh, as they're watching these, and I'd rather not. I'd rather you watch it and have the opportunity to watch it as many times as you need to to understand exactly what we've done. Anyway, guys, uh, in the next episode, we'll actually write the code to allow our character to swing his rifle. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't, let me know with a thumbs down. Uh, comments down below, guys. If you give me a thumbs down, let me know why. Uh, I'm 100% willing to make changes. I know how to do this stuff, and I'm really hoping that you're learning how to do it too. That's why I'm doing this. It's not for me. So if I'm not doing it well, if I'm not doing it the way you want to see it, or if I'm doing something so that you don't really understand, then let me know. Okay, let me know down in the comments. I'm also really hoping to see the progress you're making, guys. Once you guys start to make some games, I really want to see them. I'd love to showcase them right here on my channel and say, hey, look what so-and-so did. Uh, they made this game out of my tutorials, and it's really awesome. So I really hope you guys are doing that. Anyway, thumbs up. Thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.